Hey, okay, welcome to the craziness. I can't find any silence. We just had a baby here a couple days ago. Everybody's acting a little weird. So um, today I'm going to paint for you guys a uh, little bit of spring. Been seeing a few bees going around our raspberry bushes and stuff. So honey's in the mix. We are going to be making. And for those of you who don't know, I've never had any formal training. So if I can paint, you can paint. I'm going to show you how. So I've got a tiny little bit of brown um, just for part of, I mean, that's way too much. Uh, a little bit of black, some white, and some yellow. And I'm going to use a Sharpie today because I think the nice crisp lines are going to make this look really kind of um, interesting. So I'm going to draw it out first um, with the Sharpie and then we're just going to color it in with paint and have some fun. All right. So here we go. Slip you over to my painting. So I've kind of drawn it out in pencil real light so that I can draw it quick for you guys without making a mess. So something that you can do too. First of all, my canvas, I painted over it. So you can see another painting kind of through it. I just quickly went over it with house paint. So I have something to work on and not spend a bazillion dollars on canvases. So um, it's a little bit blue, but I would like you guys to paint your canvas first, white, let it dry, then start doing this. So we're going to start with the jar and I'm going to start with this shape here. That's the top sort of of the jar. Um, and it comes around. So when you're doing this, give it this slight little arc, not straight across, otherwise it won't look round. And the top part comes around sort of like, so it's that can be even more swooped if you want. But keep this swoop line the same as this swoop line. So it's the same and it's gonna be, it's gonna make it look like it comes out like that when we're done. And then, and really you're, it can be shaped like this if you want. It can be rounder. I mean, it's up to you. I'm thinking Winnie the Pooh when he had a round little honey pot. So I went around. I like it round. Let's, and again, I went over my lines. It's all kinds of texture in here. I don't even know what that is. So I want that to kind of square off a little bit at the bottom. And then um, I have a line in here again, same as this one here. There's a line in here. It's going to be this full of honey. And then same as that one up there that you did with the arc. You're going to do a slight arc here as well. And that's the top of the honey. So all this is honey. This is kind of what you see on top so you can be deep into your, um, your pot. Let's give it a label. I decided on a label that looks like this. But your label can just be square if that's the way that you want it. And my handwriting is terrible, but... Whatever. Honey. Honey! Let's give it some um, lines in here too. So if there's just a line there. Here's the little screw lines. And I kind of made them loopy. So this one's going to go on an angle so that you can screw into it a little bit. And then this one will angle down. So it kind of looks like it's a bit screwy. There's your honey pot. And then, you know those honey uh, little ladle things that you have? But hold the honey little wooden and they've got the little things like that and these little pieces they all hold the honey on there so you know they're going with the spoon I didn't want to draw the line all the way through this so it may look kind of awkward but it's just a little wooden I don't even know what they call them honey spools or something with little honey. I don't know what they call them. All right. So my lines, I'm going to go sideways because I want to draw a straight line that connects to here. And I'm better going sideways than I am going down with the pen. So I'm going to just draw and hopefully it lines up to that close enough. And then parallel. Come up. I want it to be a little higher. Let's give it a round end. So it's kind of cute. There. 
sitting on the table. Looks kind of cute, hey? All right, so um, maybe we could draw some bumblebees on here. You can draw some flowers if you want. Let's give this guy up here. Round little point here. Got some stripes. We'll make these the black stripes. You can just color those with felt pen. Little head, little fat body. It's got kind of a leg. His back leg's a little thicker and it hangs a bit. Um, wings. So when you come out, try to get in right to his body and same with this side. Make them the same size. We're not even going to color those ones in. Your background is already, um, your background is already white. So that's going to be perfect. Give him a leg. And maybe a couple antennas. It's easier to do that with the um, felt pen, definitely. You can have as many bees on here as you want. You can have another one flying up in this direction. Give them a little flight path. Maybe it came off there. Maybe it came from down here. Ooh, let's give it some honey floating on the table. Just got all carried away. Maybe it's dribbling a little bit. That's me a little pile of honey down there. Maybe he came from down here. Well, what I'm going to fill the rest of this canvas in, you can do as much as you want. I'm probably just going to go around this corner. Maybe you're going to have like a flower over here. It's up to you. But you're going to start drawing these honeycomb patterns. So it's just a straight line and then an angle line down here. Hexagon shapes, you know, this the honeycomb thing. Okay, so I'm going to bring this closer to you guys. We are going to get to paint, I promise. And then fit them like a puzzle into here. So then this one will fit in there pretty nicely. And then you're going to have one here. And then there's the angle there. So we're going to draw an angle here. Straight line, or a straight line up here. And then you can just sort of fill in a pattern that goes like this along there. I'm going to start to paint though, because I want to get painting. So we are going to use, let me use my round brush. And I want to take some, I'm going to make this brown. Like I said, I have way too much. I just needed a touch of brown. I'm going to water that out some because I don't even want that to be dark. So I'm watering it out. I add white to it. It changes the color. But if I just water it down, it lightens the color up. Lightens the color up. So I'm leaving those little treads. I'm going to call them treads. I'm going to change that color just a little bit. Um, maybe I'm going to put some yellow, some yellow in my brown. Just a little bit more. The yellowy brown, just so that they're a different color. I actually really like that color. I do like that color. So I'm going to take that color and I'm going to put it up here. It's that brownie yellow. A little more brownie yellow. A little more brownie yellow on the top of my B while I'm using that color. Okay. The basic rule of thumb when you're using yellow, if you want to have a really, really bright yellow, um, you're always going to put white behind it. So you guys are already painting your canvases white, so you won't need to put white behind it. But if you decided to color your background a sky blue or pink or something, you're going to mix white in with your yellow so that you get this nice bright yellow color for your bee. 
not even going to touch his wings because his wings, I wanted them to be transparent anyways. Super cute. Okay, so we've got just a touch of brown here. I'm going to move a lot of my yellow into that just so I don't have like golden, golden, uh, like yellow, yellow, yellow. But just a little bit of a, a brown yellow color for my honey. Same almost as that, only just even a bit brighter. Especially if you're up in this top part here. You can add more yellow to it for the bottom part so it's a little bit lighter, but still not pure yellow. Not pure yellow. And I just went over my felt pin line, which is okay, because I can just go back over that again later when it dries. When it dries. Farmer's markets. Sunshine, berries. Oh, it's raining today. It's raining today is a good day to come and paint. I was running around all day because... We finally, counters, counters, cupboards were in at Ikea. And Ikea is finally open, so my mom made me go with her to Ikea. Left and got there just before it opened at 10 o'clock. And had to wait in the very, very long lineup. Could have filled this in with a bigger brush, I suppose. Would have been faster. So you can see that that's a little bit darker on the top. So it looks a little farther away. Cool. If you don't notice it, take a little more brown and put it in there. Mm, I like it. I like it. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, for this little pile of honey, I want it to be this one. I want it to be the golden one. Light, light. More yellow. You can give it some highlights if you want. Um, if you want to take a little bit of the brown and put it at the bottom of it. I'm going to take some of that brown off of here so I'm just taking away a lot of yellow. I'm just going to mix some of that brown down in here just so it's not solid yellow. Wiggle some of that brown in there. Oh that's that's nice. Very nice. Very very nice. Okay so taking some um, of the brown yellow and I'm just going to go along the bottom of this Wipe it all off. Get my other yellow. Straight yellow. Just blend it a little bit. Just so it looks a little darker on the bottom, but not... Oh, goodness gracious. You guys can even see what I'm doing. Okay. So I took a little bit of the brownie stuff, and then I just blended it a little bit. Just tapping it around. Just so that it's mixed and mingled inside of there with the browns and yellows. The bright yellow right there on the top. Straight yellow right there on top. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, up there, because you painted again, you guys have painted your um, background white. We don't need to put a white underneath this yellow. You can just go in and paint it straight yellow. Every one of these. And you can, you can put some highlights and low lights on these if you want, like add some little white marks. You can take some of that brown, a little bit of brown on there. And then you can sort of do like one side with a little bit of brown. 
that gives it some depth. So if you're going to do that, let me exaggerate and show you exaggerated brown to where it should be. So it should be on all the same sides there, like those three sides. That's way, 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 way too dark. So I'm going to take some of that color with my brush, nothing on my brush, wash it off. Let me get rid of some of that and move it to the other ones. You see how that makes it look a little more 3D? And then you just carry on, draw more of them and put more in through here. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to bring this down and around. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to draw a few more, fit them in to those spaces. Okay, let's just see where it was at there. Going like that and then up like that. Going out. That was a little bigger than the other one. I can't do it because I started on one angle, so it's just looking weird to me. Ah, uh, finger in the paint. So I got a little messed up right there because I turned it sideways. Stay on the same angle so that they all fit in nice and like a puzzle. See how that works better? Okay, now if I paint those yellow, it's going to look great. I really like it. Do you guys like this one? I hope you like it. Colors make me happy. I'm going to bring it real close so you guys can see all of the different things a little bit closer. Maybe you want to just take, I don't even why I put white on my plate. I didn't really use it. Didn't really use it. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm just going to go down the jar some lines down the jar, a little bit of an angle, just so that, let me throw some white in there, just so that it looks like it has a highlight, a reflection of the glass on there. Do some of my brown yellow. On these ones. Doesn't have to be neat. Messy is good, you guys. I'm going to slowly get you guys painting messier because it all looks good. All right, so let me bring this nice and close. Look at my bees. My, see my messiness from far away back here. That all looks completely different than when it's up close. So step back from your paintings if you don't. You see the white reflections? If it looks kind of funny to you, just step back a little bit and it'll, it'll look completely different. It'll look like it makes sense. And if it doesn't, then you'll know where to fix it up. Okay, I think I want to have a little bit of white on my bee. Maybe a little bit of white on there. I like it. I like it. You can color that in any color you want. But for now, I think that, uh, and I had black too. I didn't use any black paint. 
Oh, well, there you go. There's me at my best, wasting paint. So I'm just going to throw my name on here. There you go. So you can see that I still have some white that I need to. I've got blue paint underneath here. It's so funny. Blue paint underneath there because I painted something the other day and then I painted over it. I can take my white, cover up those marks pretty easily. And there you go. There's your honeybees out there making honey for you guys. Uh, thanks for showing up. Let me put this on. So um, I do have some fun ones coming up next month. So or next month, next week, some real cutesy cutesy ones all in my head. So it's gonna be uh, a week of sweet smells, uh, treasures. And that's all the hints I'm going to give you guys. So, um, yeah, anyways, it's a nice quick painting. Lots of fun. Um, put flowers on yours. It's up to you. Whatever you want to put on your painting, it's always up to you. So um, please feel free to tag me um, at Home With Empty Canvas on Facebook. Um, my Patreon, copy my Patreon link. I will be down there in the beginning of the painting. So you can just copy that out. Share it with your friends. It all helps my small little business so much. Okay. Talk to you next week. Bye for now.